When I started watching wrestling in the early 90s, the business was heavily filled with gimmick-based characters. You had guys like Doink, who was a clown, a sumo wrestler, a Cuban immigrant with a bad attitude. These gimmicks worked out, but what about the ones that didn't? And what about the wrestlers that actually went on to have strong careers after a bad gimmick? Today I want to talk about some wrestlers who actually recovered from their questionable characters and went on to keep their jobs and even have some success afterwards. Lord Steven Regal broke out as a WCW star in the early 90s. The company portrayed him as a British snob who hailed from royalty. After competing in WCW until 1998, he left the company for the World Wrestling Federation. Shortly after his debut with the WWF, Regal suffered an injury and was off of television for a while. He's a man, such a man, such a man. He returned as Steven Regal, the man's man, a character created by Vince Russo based on the brawny man. Looking like a cross between a construction worker and a lumberjack, Regal was known for doing manly things like shaving with a straight razor or chopping wood. Though this character was horrible, it was actually his drug addiction that caused him and the WWF to part ways. He would return to WCW for a brief stint with his old gimmick only to wind back up in the WWF by the year 2000, this time as William Regal. Even with the name change, he was the same British snob we grew to know in WCW. He remained with the company both wrestling and taking on jobs like general manager for many years and even after retirement he still has a backstage role with the company. Due to his premature release we never got to see what could have become of the man's man but I'm pretty sure it wouldn't have been good. Kane, a dominant monster that's been in the WWE for over two decades. He's held just about every title the company has to offer and been through some strange storylines as well, but he didn't start out as The Undertaker's brother. No, no, there's more to his story than that. Known as many different names, including Angus King and Unibomb, Glenn Jacobs got his big break in Smoky Mountain Wrestling where he held the tag team titles with Al Snow. Jacob signed with the WWF in 1995 and shortly after was given the horrible gimmick of Isaac Yankum, DDS. Get it? Yankum? Dentist? Yeah. He served as Jerry the King Lawler's private dentist and was quickly intertwined into Lawler's feud with Bret Hart. He had the hair of Psycho Sid and the teeth of a meth addict. At nearly seven feet tall, he was a beast, but even that couldn't save him from this horrid gimmick. He was on TV longer than he should have been, but eventually the gimmick was retired. So then he returned as Kane, right? Wrong. In September of 1996, he showed back up on television as Diesel, after the real Diesel, Kevin Nash, left for WCW. This was one of those characters that I thought would last maybe a few weeks tops, but no. This stupid gimmick ran well into the following year as he wrestled side by side with the fake Razor Ramon. But unlike the fake Razor Ramon, Jacobs went on to find huge success after his bad gimmicks. Chris Canyon started off a somewhat normal career in WCW, but all of that changed in 1997. WCW, trying to capitalize on the success of Mortal Kombat, decided to create characters inspired by the series which led to gimmick wrestlers like Glacier and Mortis. Now I want to start off by saying I always thought the Mortis character was actually kind of cool but I can also see the cheesiness in it and it just didn't get over like the company had expected. It could be that we never got much of a backstory for Mortis. He had a few matches with Glacier as they tried to build a rivalry between the two and then he ended up in a storyline with the flock. Now, normally this is where WCW would pull the plug on a guy and kick him to the curb. Instead, they unmasked Mortis and repackaged him as Canyon. He went on to have some years of decent success with the company and was even a part of the Invasion storyline in the WWF. He wrestled there for a few more years before retiring due to injuries. 
I feel like Mortis could have been a lot more, but WCW kind of dropped the ball on this one. Chavo Guerrero Jr. wasn't a huge name in WCW, but he was known. I mean, he was on Nitro pretty much every week at one point. He was the nephew of Eddie Guerrero, and he was usually feuding with him. In 2000, he was thrown into the Misfits in Action stable as Lieutenant Loco, which was pretty much just an amped up version of Chavo that they decided to throw into some camo pants. And believe it or not, this isn't even the gimmick that almost ruined him. Eventually, Chavo returned to his old self, but WCW was soon purchased by the WWF. He was once again reunited with his uncle after his contract was picked up by the WWF. He landed a role as a trainer on the second season of Tough Enough and then returned to the ring, teaming with his uncle Eddie as the Los Guerreros. In 2005, Chavo was given one of the strangest gimmicks I've ever seen. He was now Kerwin White, a white guy. He denounced his Latino heritage and decided to bleach his hair and stock up on sweater vests. He would go on to talk down on anybody who wasn't white and even use the catchphrase, if it's not white, it's not right. Now that's not right. Immediately following the death of his uncle Eddie, this horrible gimmick was dropped and he returned to wrestling as Chavo. He continued to wrestle for the WWE until 2011 when he was granted his release from the company. Nobody can say for sure, but I can almost guarantee the Kerwin White gimmick would have ruined Chavo's career had it gone on for too long. Hardcore Holly. This guy doesn't take any crap from anybody. I mean, did you see what he did to that guy from Tough Enough? It's safe to say he's not a nice guy and you probably shouldn't mess with him. But you wouldn't have known that back in 1994. Meet Sparky Plug, a NASCAR driver turned pro wrestler. His outfit was almost as bad as his name and his hair was like something you'd see in a Poison music video. He smiled and gave the thumbs up frequently and honestly, everything about this gimmick was cringeworthy. Luckily, he was able to reinvent his image as Hardcore Holly, but the memory of Sparky Plug will never completely go away. Kevin Nash, Diesel, Vinny Vegas. He's known by many names, but the one character that he probably wants to forget about is Oz. In 1991, WCW decided to give Nash a character based on the Wizard of Oz story. Nash's hair was painted silver, and he was even given one of the creepiest masks I've ever, ever seen a wrestler wear. It's no wonder he jumped ship to the WWF to be a bodyguard. Obviously, he went on to be very successful as both the WWF and WCW champion, but it does kind of feel like WCW tried to kill his career before it even got started. Booker T was already quite successful both as one half of the tag team Harlem Heat and a nice upper mid-card run, but for some reason, the powers that be decided to have him join the Misfits in action. Just like Chavo, they had Booker trade in his tights for some camo and his name for a comedic stereotype, G.I. Bro. What you might not know is that almost 10 years earlier, he wrestled under the same exact gimmick. But unlike back then, Booker was now a household name with a good amount of momentum behind him, so this gimmick change made zero sense. Luckily, he would recover and return to his normal self, later winning the WCW Championship and continuing a very successful WWE run where he's still employed to this day. If you remember the Spirit Squad, well, then you're in the same boat as me, and I pity the both of us. They were a group of male cheerleaders that debuted in 2005 and ended up as Mr. McMahon's personal cronies. One of the members, Nikki, was kind of lost in the shuffle of the group, and after they disbanded, he was sent back to Ohio Valley Wrestling to further his development. After a few years of bouncing around in the minor leagues, he was called back up to the WWF in 2008 and debuted as Dolph Ziggler. Throughout his time in the company, he established himself well, holding numerous titles and even earning a cult following while being portrayed as a heel. While only one other member of the Spirit Squad achieved success, it was short-lived and forgettable. The fact that Ziggler was able to bounce back from being a male cheerleader definitely says a lot. What are some wrestlers that you think had bad gimmicks but still managed to recover from them? Let me know in the comments section below, and until next time, 
Thanks for watching.